So in this video, we're going to look through the Java library examples for more test automation hints and tips. And this time we're going to look at WebDriver. Welcome to Evil Tester Videos. My name is Alan Richardson and in this channel we look at tips and techniques for improving our software testing. This particular playlist and series is on test automation using Java. So we're going to look at libraries that can help us. Where this time we're going to look at WebDriver, which is a browser abstraction layer. We use it to automate browsers. That's what it does. It's an abstraction layer for browsers. So we can use it to automate Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and we can even run it headless, which means no browser shows up on our screen. So in the library examples project over on GitHub, which you can download if you want, github.com slash evil tester slash library examples. One of the folders in here is for WebDriver. There we go. And there's a whole bunch of code in here. So what I'm going to do in this video is quickly explain WebDriver and quickly show you the code and how it works. Remember, what we're doing is we're automating the Swappy Web API, which is a REST API for Star Wars, but it also has a GUI. It's a GUI that lets us um, run commands or make requests on the REST API, but we can automate that through the GUI as well. So it's a good website for experimenting with. Selenium WebDriver is open source. It has bindings for lots of different languages. I'm going to be using it in Java in this one. And it has drivers for Chrome, Firefox, HTML unit, which is headless, Internet Explorer, and Edge, and Safari. And in Safari on the Mac, it's built into the operating system. So it's even easier to use than any other platform now. So let's have a look at the code here. So in the pom.xml and the project, when you download it, you will see that the first dependency that we have in here is WebDriver. And this is all I have to add into my pom.xml to have WebDriver available to me. And how do I know to do that? Well, over on the WebDriver site, if I click on download and then click on Maven users, there is the dependency. That's the most up-to-date one, 3.4.0, and I'm using 3.4.0, so we are up-to-date. So Selenium moves on with different versions. Then if we want to control the browsers, we have to have the driver for the particular browser and version of the browser that we're working with. So let's have a quick look at these tests. So I'm just going to run these tests. I haven't changed them. This is what comes down when you download the project. Let's run this and see what happens. So I've got one, two, three, four, five tests in here, and they're all running. Let's see if they pass. They all pass and they all execute in a browser, but we didn't see a browser. Why was that? Well, that was because in the code here, I'm using the HTML unit driver. The HTML unit driver is a Java based driver and it's headless. So it doesn't actually show a browser. What we really want when we're automating applications through a browser is to use a real browser. But I'm using HTML unit just to make things easier. So HTML unit driver is a bit like using JSOOP or REST Assured to hit HTTP requests. But because it's a pretend browser, it's a real browser, it's just in code. Because it's a headless browser, we can do all the stuff that we normally do in WebDriver. So what does this test do? This test says, start up a new HTML unit driver. But I've coded against the interface so that I could replace this with, say, Safari driver and make it nice and easy for my test to run. Then I say driver.get swappy.co, which means open this page, then assert that the title contains Star Wars, then exit. So I could in theory change this to use the Chrome driver. If I run this test now, and I'm just gonna run this test, and we saw the browser pop up and go to swappy.co and assert that the title was Star Wars, and exit. See how easy browser automation is? This is simple. Now the way that Chrome driver works, I have to download a separate executable. All the instructions for doing this are on the website. I download the executable, add it to the path, and then in WebDriver when I say new Chrome driver, I can execute my automated code against Chrome. Now if I was on the Mac, which I'm not, I would simply need to have my code look like this. 
and then this would run without me having to install an extra driver because the Safari driver is built into Mac. Mac used to be a real pain for uh, using WebDriver, but now that the Safari driver is built in, that's fantastic. So let me jump back here to Chrome driver. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these other tests. This test used the person API for look. This is calling HTML unit driver. It says this does actually work in HTML unit driver because some of these tests don't work through HTML unit, but they do work on a real browser. And that's because HTML unit isn't a proper browser. So some things work, some things don't. This one, let's have a quick look at this. If I do this in the browser, one thing when we're working with WebDriver is we have to make sure that the things that we're doing actually work when we do it interactively in the browser. Then we will know whether there's a problem in our code or a problem in the web application itself. So all this test does, this is another way of calling the API through the GUI. And you can see here that going direct to this, it brings back some details on the page. So this says, go to that URL, which we just saw, find an element div response info pre. Well, that's a CSS selector, which means that in here, if I do inspect, I should be able to find that. Control F, find by string, selector. That's what we want, the CSS selector. Put in that, there we go. So that says, find this element here, which is this pre-block. Get all the text from there. It actually prints it out. Then check that, or assert that the string contains Luke Skywalker. Let's run this test. There we go. So that's what it's printed out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this. This is pretending to be Chrome. This doesn't mean it acts like Chrome. This just means it sends headers as though it was Chrome. So I'm going to change this to a different person. And if it is actually working on the HTML unit, this test should fail because the text will no longer contain Luke Skywalker. And there we go, the test failed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly, again, have this start up Chrome driver, just so we can see it. Chrome driver is my preferred driver for Windows and Safari. It seems to be the most robust one at the moment. Firefox has changed over to use something called the Gecko driver, which works pretty well, it's pretty good. And if you want to use most modern versions of Firefox, you need to use the Gecko driver, but it's still under development, whereas the Chrome driver is a bit more mature. Let me run this test now, and we should see the browser pop up. I might have to move the window. Browser pops up, goes to that place. There's the text in there because because the test crashed, and the cr test crashed there, because the JSON doesn't contain Luke Skywalker, I can actually see what this is because it didn't call the driver.quit command, which means the browser is still running. And what I should be checking for is C3PO. So I know that that test is working. That's good. This test is pretty much the same. It just does what we just did. Look for person two, check C3PO. This one doesn't actually work on HTML unit driver, but this test passed. That's because <laughs> it fails to work, but it uses the default. So let's have a quick look at this test. Let's do this test manually. Sometimes when we have automated execution, it seems to work, but it doesn't really. So we have to get in the habit of checking whether we've automated effectively and doing that interactively at the browser. So this test says, go to this swappy call URL, send these keys, click request. Then this says Luke Skywalker, which it does. Now the reason it works is by default, it's got Luke Skywalker in. So this thing didn't work at all, but that's because even though this is a very simple GUI, it's making AJAX requests to the back end because it's hitting an API and HTML unit. I haven't spent the time trying to get the JavaScript working through HTML unit. This is just uh, an example. What we should be doing then is starting up a Chrome driver. Then this test should work. Let me run this now. 
The brows are up. Did you see it type people one? Uh -uh, that ran too fast for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to debug this and put a breakpoint on this send keys line. Did I run that? I ran that instead of... So I need to debug it. Having put the breakpoint in, I need to debug it. Best demos in the world. I do the best demos in the world. There we go. So there's the browser. There's our code. We're at the point where it's going to input that text into this field. Currently, there is no text in that field. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step over this. Now, it has put text in that field. So I know that this is working. Then what it says it's going to do is it's going to find this button and click it. Then, because this is an AJAX request, this should get refreshed. But we didn't see it refresh, so I'm not sure whether it's actually working properly or whether it's still asserting against this. So what I'm going to do... So I'll run that test to the end to make it finish. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. This is how we know whether our GUI tests are working effectively by changing them. And all tests, by the way, if you haven't seen them fail for the right reason, then you don't know whether they're actually going to work in production properly. So by changing this to fail, I will know whether it's asserting on the right details. So I'm just going to run this test now, and I'm expecting it to fail. And it passed. Why did it pass when we were expecting it to fail? Well, let's have a look. If I debug this, then in the test, we're about to send the text. Let's send the text. We see it type in people. Press the button, clicks the button, and then it takes a little bit of time before this changes, because it's clicking the button, sending a request, coming back, the page hasn't changed. WebDriver synchronized by default on page loads. Anything that happens in the page with the DOM changing through JavaScript or AJAX doesn't synchronize out the box. We have to write code to synchronize on that. So if I finish this test now, it should fail because we do not have Luke Skywalker on the page. We have C3PO. And there we go. The test failed on the assertion Luke Skywalker. So now I know that really what I need in here is after the click, I need some synchronization. And I haven't planned this part. So I'm going to have to do some live coding. Let's have a quick look. So WebDriver has an expected conditions class. And look, we've got something text to be present in element. So I'm going to use that. This is not the best way to synchronize, to be honest. And since I'm just doing this really crude so I'm going to say in this interactive output, element located by, I want the text uh, C3PO, not D3PO, C3PO. I'm not up to date with Star Wars. Is there a D3PO now? There could well be. But just saying expect conditions text be present isn't going to do the business. What we need is a new web driver wait. And in the web driver wait, I have to give it the driver. And I say new web driver wait. And on that wait, I want to wait until expected conditions has this text to be present. I also have to tell it what the timeout value is. So I'm going to say wait for a maximum of 10 seconds. So there I have some very crude wait code. Let me get rid of the syntax there. There we go. So create a wait. This is an explicit wait. I mean, I'm going to explicitly wait until this condition where the text to be present in this element is met. Then we're going to assert that it contains it. Now, in theory, I do not need to assert on this. But sometimes we wait for specific conditions. So I would wait until this was loaded then assert that it contains the right details. It just so happens that I'm asserting on the final condition that I want. And so it's not quite as good, but it's good enough for this demo. So if I run this test now, and remember this is live coding and I haven't done that. I'm pretty sure this is one of the exercises that's in here. So I'm just giving away all my secrets. Let's see if this works. This is really exciting. Every time I do live coding, it's really exciting. So let's go. 
page is loading, type in people2. Did I do it in debug mode? I'm doing it in debug mode. So let's just run this. So we're at the point where it's going to do it. Run. Winner. Okay. So you didn't see that happen, but that's because it all worked. So we know it failed before. So now when I change it, we know that it passes. Now there are some exercises in here you can have a look. All the other tests do here is this doesn't actually work in HBO unit driver. Therefore, if you go through the process that I did, make this use Chrome driver or Safari driver, then you can try and get this working, see if it works. Because all that happens here is we go to swappy.co, we find a particular uh, link, then we click on it. So this is clicking on the first link that has that, which is probably this, I imagine. Then check in at Luke Skywalker. So this would pass on HMO unit driver, again, because the default is uh, Luke Skywalker. I'm not sure, there might be synchronization errors in here, but this extra test shows you that you can actually click on links once you've found them. This is project is a very, very simple introduction to WebDriver. However, if you download it and run it after having Maven and Java set up, if you go through the process of setting up the Chrome driver, or if you're on Mac, it's even easier, just use Safari driver, you'll be good to go in seconds, then you can experiment with WebDriver very quickly. Feel free to expand these tests, have a look at the, the WebDriver API. If you want to know more about WebDriver, I've got a website called seleniumsimplified.com that covers it. And I hope you found this video useful. So if you have, make sure that you subscribe down below so that you never miss a video and tell me what other libraries you would like to see me covered because I'll create more videos like this. There will certainly be more videos covering Cucumber, Jason, Hamcrest, JSoup and rest assured at a minimum. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of those and thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.